Learner objectives, I'm really going to go through this case history, look at why we, the embankment dam uh, section was used that it was, and of course this ties into exercise number four, and go through some construction issues as well as the, the use of material on site. But the, the client in this case, um, you know, again, it was for water supply uh, to reduce the impacts during a drought. And they had some criteria they wanted to make sure that were followed. They didn't want to have any damage or minimize damage to local roads, meaning they wanted to use those on-site materials as much as possible to avoid a whole bunch of truck traffic because it went through some neighborhoods to kind of get to this dam. Um, county Highway, the County Highway had to actually be relocated from one side of the valley to the other. So they want to minimize uh, closure of that. Uh, there was some relatively close uh, residents nearby and they wanted to not disrupt them any more than possible and actually in the contract um, the owner put in which was uh, the city of Loveland Colorado put in some requirements of a certain percentage that they had to use within a certain zip code uh, local suppliers and like subcontractors for say uh, vegetation you know reclamation and that sort of thing So uh, again, uh, the, the existing dam is kind of repeat about 1,100 foot long, 80, 86 foot high, had a spillway and outlet on the left abutment and a, a very small drainage area of 1.2 square miles. And it was, uh, it was an off-channel reservoir. I'll show you a little bit about that. But here's, here's a photo before construction. Let's show the spillway, you know, off on that left abutment. You can barely see it, but there's a little tower right here. Um, I'm sorry, there's a bridge and a tower for the, for the outlet works. And then of course, there's the crest of the dam right there. And for perspective, this was the county highway that uh, had to be relocated. Geologic profile, but this is right across the valley, had, had, uh, had sandstone on one side, and it, it, it uh, was... Um, unconformable over this uh, hard granite on the on the uh, right side so left side and right side is looking downstream and uh, I said that the outlet and spillway were over on in this uh, sandstone and there was some paleo channels that were actually cut into this sandstone on the order of 20 to 30 feet deep in fact when they put the outlet in the existing outlet they had to put in as much as 10 foot of backfill concrete because it went through some of those paleo channels and, and for a variety of reasons, and you can probably um, understand why by looking at this, the spillway and new outlet was put over on the right abutment where the granite is. So again, major design features, raised the dam 61 feet, had a new spillway and outlet works. The uh, existing outlet was abandoned in place and there was a filter placed on the downstream side of that. Uh, County Road had to be relocated by a mile. Uh, and then there had to be a temporary water bypass pipe that was put in because we drained the reservoir. Immediately downstream of the dam is, uh, is a water treatment plant and they still needed water. So uh, that was part of the construction as well. Had winter construction requirements uh, in, the, in the specifications, um, required extensive grouting and there was some, uh, some environmental mitigation. So this is just a, a table of the, uh, for the embankment design, some of the criteria based on the maximum credible earthquake. This is in Colorado, so it doesn't have a high uh, peak horizontal ground acceleration. And then we, of course, look at end of construction, steady state, rapid drawdown, and post seismic cases. Here's the minimum acceptable factors of safety. And uh, based on post seismic, it, it, it uh, still had to maintain a minimum of, of three foot of freeboard. And I go, of course, it wasn't, that wasn't too difficult really to achieve that because uh, again, it wasn't a high load. So uh, again, we, one of the criteria was to excavate this uh, soft uh, clay deposit right down to bedrock, limit cracking, provide adequate stability, that upstream shear key and berm were required for, uh, for stability, the foundation grouting. We, we used a maximum of two foot of camber. Now remember this thing is sitting on rock, so that was all in the compression of the embankment itself on that 1%. Uh, based on the rays of the dam and that, that uh, height of the dam at that location. 
I put in a, a, a filter and dry, blanket drain, and that was sort of a, a three-layer system, sand, then the drain, then a, another layer of sand on top of it. Um, zone one came from the bottom of the reservoir, and zone two, reservoir rim and, and rippable sandstone. And partway through the design process, it was determined that we there was only a 20% margin on the borrow area for the shell material using the configuration that I showed earlier. So we did a, there was a whole bunch of additional evaluations that were done and was found out that that sandstone was actually rippable. And then in the, in the contract documents and the specifications, it stated that up to about 100,000 yards of material from that sandstone, that rippable sandstone could be used processed and used in the shell material and they ended up using about 75,000 yards was the ultimate so um, so that's how we kind of balance the, the the site out there plan view of the project you know here's the embankment uh, located here the old county road you can see here's part of it still left and it went right through where the raised reservoir area is uh, and this, this pool was at, so to speak, the normal pool or, or conservation pool. So, of course, that would have been underwater. So the, the relocated highway was this brown line that went on the other side of the reservoir rim. Um, and then the, um, uh, the pipeline, where was it? here it is, the, the yellow line is that, that uh, the pipeline that fed the, the treatment plant downstream. And this is, like I said, this is an off-site Reservoir, very small drainage. So the water came from this Charles Hansen feeder canal, which is actually bored through the Continental Divide to feed water uh, heading to the east to into the site. So that, that could be controlled, and then that was picked up and then uh, pumped down to the, to the uh, treatment plant. So and just another view of the, of the, of the cross section that I, you, shot, you, you saw earlier. Um, with the downstream rays, and we talked about the shell material and the core. I don't think there's anything else to to uh, highlight there. This is a plan in, in profile along the profile al along the uh, the valley or, or uh, underneath the profile of the center line of the embankment, and this shows the extensive grouting program that was used and angled holes. And Ed talked about this that intersected. Um, and particularly higher grout takes in the granite because that was uh, had a lot of joint sets in the granite on that uh, right abutment. Just kind of put this up there, showing the level of detail that was required. This was a drawing in in, in the uh, design set, the final design set. This was the excavation plan. Here is the here is the new embankment alignment right here. The old embankment is here. All this excavation kind of in the shaded area was to get down, take all that foundation, that soft clay down to bedrock, had to estimate kind of top of bedrock contours to give them some idea of the depth of excavation. That was based on a whole bunch of borings down in this area. Uh, and also the excavation for the new outlet is here. Had a spillway off in the granite over on the side. Talk about that a little bit more in a second. And there's the excavation for the shear key on the upstream side. Oh, there's one thing I just wanted to point out. <clears throat> so I, I talked about the drawing set like on the first day. So you can see we included this excavation plan and also several cross sections that just showed the excavation uh, in cross section for the contractors, not only to have an understanding of what the uh, variability in the excavation looked like, but also um, from a layout and control standpoint to actually build this project. So plan and cross section for excavation. So here's the final contours of the dam with, with the new dam crest right abutment. And here's the other abutment over here on the left side. Um, the, the, the uh, berm and shear key here is the relocated county highway. And again, you see the, the, the cross sections that were used to kind of define the geometry and able to build it as well. Um, so this was considered to be an adequate number of cross sections to, to, to have a, a full understanding to control the project. 
You've seen these details before, two-stage filter system, uh, protecting the foundation with the, with the sand, filter sand, and, uh, and then this uh, tow drain clean-out pipe. Talked about camber a lot on the project. I'm not going to kill you with it a little bit more, but just to let you know, it tapered up on both sides, and we had two-foot maximum camber. So just kind of a review, design challenge, inadequate upstream and downstream slope stability. So what was done? Excavate that soft material and construct the upstream uh, shear key and berm. Um, inadequate availability of uh, a fill material, particularly for the shell. So we used uh, the ripperable rock uh, for the shell material in combination with, with other materials. Relocated road cost and maintaining existing uh, features so that, that the road was actually came up the downstream slope of the dam and then uh, went parallel with the with the reservoir. And, and this is one I haven't talked about. Um, due to the height of the embankment, we uh, the first design was a, for the outlet tower, for the low-level outlet, was it included a pier that was going to penetrate right through the dam itself and down into f foundation. So you, we had to have have drilled a, uh, um, a foundation underneath the embankment. So what we did to solve that was we, we, we slightly over steepened the upstream slope of the dam to move that footing for that abutment of the bridge a little tiny bit upstream and, and, uh, and got the longest span that could be possible to tie into the tower and that eliminated the pier because uh, we were afraid if that was to crack, we would have, have full reservoir head down into the foundation. So wanted to eliminate the pier, and I'll, I got some construction photos that show this. So just a, a 3D image to give you a, a better indication of the project. This is that county highway that comes up and, uh, and actually is part of the, the downstream slope as it comes up to the abutment. Here's the dam, uh, and there's a spillway um, off on the right abutment. So um, resource con conservation, again, we, we process on-site excavated materials to use those, had the rippable rock. Um, we, that spillway, the existing spillway had to come out, so some of that concrete rubble was actually used in that shear key. Um, there was some, I said, some kind of environmental mitigation measures that had to be done, so it was relocating some trees, wildlife corridor, the existing spillway bridge actually was salvaged and kind of a weird requirement, but we were required to put a, a wildlife bridge because the deer had to cross because we were Im influencing where their main route was. So put the bridge in place, put some like gravel on top of it. And, uh, and then one of the big benefits again, was we were able to uh, uh, create an additional 600 feet, 600 acre feet of storage um, by excavating out of the reservoir area. So, a few construction photos, and I think uh, we we talked about this, but let me just get you oriented. This is the downstream slope of the dam. If you remember the cross section, it, it showed that excavation on the downstream slope, and here's all the undulation uh, in the foundation. So of course it's a raised dam. The dam's going to come up here, and the toe is going to come down this way. And that grout curtain was basically right underneath the center line of the raised embankment. And the, a grout cap is typically used because as, as the grout pressures are fairly high near the surface, if you didn't have it, you could create some fracturing of your rock uh, right in there. So they actually put like nipples in through, through the grout cap and then they wouldn't have to pre-drill through those. Then you uh, do your grouting right through those, those nipples sticking out of the grout cap. Photo taken during construction, the whole thing was coming up at the same time. You can see here's a spillway over here in the, in the granite. They, they processed that material, turned it into riprap. This is the upstream shell, the core, uh, the, uh, the chimney, and then the downstream shell. And this is just an aerial view of the same thing, the same zones uh, with, the, with the shell core the chimney in the downstream, just to give you another perspective of it. You've seen this photo before. This is again checking uh, that, that, uh, that chimney 
for, for width. And I just wanted to show you some perspective of the spillway. It was actually a side channel spillway. So as the flow comes up, it's gonna go over this weir, basically turn 90 degrees and go downstream. That's on the right ab uh, uh, abutment and you're looking across the dam at that location. It looks like the dam is almost finished. And then give you another perspective. Here's the county highway. There was a box culvert underneath and this is the, the channel going downstream. So the, uh, the control of the spillway is up here. Give you an, an idea of what I described earlier. Here's the uh, outlet with the bridge and, and this, here's a little footing uh, for the, for the uh, outlet works bridge to access out to where the tower, the freestanding tower where the gates were for the outlet. And again, you could kind of picture this, there would have been a pier right about here that would have penetrated right through. And, uh, and by longest span we could get, and, and just bumping this out a, a pretty short distance, uh, and then just over steepening the slope just slightly in that area, we're able to uh, put the bridge in. Give you some perspective, kind of from the same vantage point, right before construction started with a drain reservoir, and then um, almost, project is almost complete. You can see how the road comes up on the downstream slope. Actually, it creates an additional berm right here by doing that. Um, and then the, uh, of course, the, the embankment, and it looks like it's, it's pretty far along near completion. So here's, here's pretty much a completed project in, in the view of that. And then the last uh, slide is uh, the reservoir was now up to normal pool. And I just want to emphasize again, there was a first fill plan that was developed for this and followed very carefully. This had enough storage in it. Remember, we drained the whole thing. Um, Remember, and remember, the, the existing dam was, was a lot lower a lot uh, in elevation, the dam crest, than the new dam. So this had never been loaded up on the abutments before. So we, there, was, there was several, um, uh, during the first fill plan included several hold periods that you may bring up the pool, say 10 feet, you hold for two weeks. You look at all the instrumentation data, you make observations, you wanna make sure before you raise that dam, the water surface higher, that, uh, that there's no issues associated with the dam as far as performance issues. So, and I, I don't recall exactly how many, but there were several hold periods, which is, which is typical, so.